which kind of gets us to as near the end of what we've established what it is. What are going to be the gating factors now, right now, without mentioning specific company names in the US, there is a content owner battling with its MSOs about actually getting content everywhere. Now, is, is that just the start of this, that the content owners and the service providers will uh, be more and more entrenched in, in litigation? And actually, like, the, the service provider will be stopping the content owners from putting content everywhere. I mean, most of the pay TV providers we pro you know provide to in the US, they also own content. So you know they're, they're, they've got their, their feet in both camps. Um, I think it's fair to say that the FCC have, have ruled in favour of net neutrality um, at, at this moment in time. Um, you know, I think users expect to be able to cross a bridge and pay a, a simple toll, regardless of what content they've got inside the car. Um, and I, I think, you know, I think that you know that that mentality is, is thrive, th um, and and so therefore, you know, the monetization of that end service and that brand is is, is a powerful position for the pay TV vendors, and they, they could they could exploit that. Is that going to be a dominant business model, as you say, crossing, paying a toll at the bridge? Do you see brid bridges and tolls in the same way? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I think, again, again we're, we're fitting in with operator models, whatever they may be, subscription-based or not. Um, one thing we will always do, however, is give users, consumers choice, and that is offering a, an agnostic piece of kit that they can buy in Best Buy, Dixon's, JLP, Amazon, wherever, that allows them to do whatever they want to do with all of their content from their home and that's the retail sling box. Um, so I think we're in a sweet position where we'll do both and we'll ride the wave with whatever OEMs do, uh, MSOs do, and, but we'll always give consumers choice with whatever they want to do at home agnostically. And do you see that, that the legal case going on, which we perhaps shouldn't mention, is that just the portent? Well, I mean, I think it's fair to say that sling is always um, successfully uh, exploited sort of a, a bit of a, a loophole in terms of redistribution of, of content um, in, in a way that's very successful and very popular with consumers um, and, and has stood up, I think, well to any kind of legal scrutiny. Um, when you are talking about the relationship directly between content providers and MSOs, things get a little bit more prickly because uh, content providers like to sell content as many different ways as they possibly can. Uh, to the same people, depending on whether they have rights for broadcast, pay-per-view, on-demand, uh, and also on a device-by-device -device basis. So you're right that when there are some innovative uh, pay TV operators in the U.S. and around the world who are trying to distribute content over the top to iPads, even if they're limiting it, limiting it to just within the home, some of the content providers are saying, new device, new license fees. Mm. Um, and, and, and I'm sure Baldeep is very happy that he doesn't have to deal with that degree of complexity in, in that situation. And, and I think over time, um, the content providers are going to have to maybe get a little bit more reasonable in how they do that, because you can only slice the sausage so many ways. Is, is that how you see that, the salami? Of the industry, <laughs> yeah, I think you, you made a very good point. Is you know the content deals and all those dynamics are, are very complicated, and and you know the the pay TV industry isn't just about to be swept away, and that all the model that's been been you know is is, is working very well. You know, is is getting good content for consumers.